Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam. Sayyidi, the day I accepted Islam, I saw words in a verse in the Quran move around in Surat al fat I read it more than once, but I still forgot what it was, but the experience brought me to Islam. What is the meaning of this, please, Sayyidi? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> every 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 experience is different, but Surah al fat the 48th Surah, is what we just talked about tonight. Is that it uh, has to do a, a lot with the path and the reality of Prophet So it's always an opening and that the in the fatanika fatan mubeen, fatan mubeen is Sayyidina Muhammad that the, the clear opening, the victorious opening is what? With all these Muhammadan teachings, what, what is the, the clear opening? Is the, is the presence of Prophet And every subsequent verse in those four verses is about what Allah will give you because of your presence in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad he forget your he will forgive all of the sins behind you means he begin to clear your past because if he's bringing you into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad he doesn't want you to be ashamed in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and he wants those whom are in the presence of his beloved also to be pure and purified and then Allah described then I will also clean everything in the future Knowing what you're going to do, I'm going to be cleaning them so that your future is completely been purified. Sirat al mustaqeeman and that Sirat al mustaqeem is the name of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Sirat al mustaqeem That what is Sirat al mustaqeem When you say, I want to be on Sirat al mustaqeem well, and obviously, Sirat al Mustaqim is Sayyidina Muhammad. Can you be on anything other than the Muhammadan way? No. Can you be following a different way, a different Prophet, a different uh, Qur'an? No. Whatever Sayyidina Muhammad brought for us is the Holy Qur'an, is the way, is the entire path. So, he is. Sirat al Mustaqeem. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. We are Surah Nasran Aziza. Well, as a result, and Allah says, I'm going to support you with a mighty support. That's Allah showing, This is my love for Sayyidina Muhammad. If you're with the one whom I love, then I'm supporting you with an immense, immense support. That just uh, that support enough to knock down uh, all the walls and doors of uh, shaitans, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa alaykum as salaam Sayyidi, what is sincerity, ikhlas and how to achieve it? Are you making those up? <laughs> the sincerity. We have a whole subject we gave two weeks ago, at least be sincere with your senses and everything. Go, go back to the last uh, two months of talks. And it was all about your senses and purify the senses and uh, alhamdulillah you have to be sincere with all your senses. That anyone wanting to reach a mutaqeen 
Then uh, Allah want them to be uh, purified in their ears, their eyes, their breath, their tongue, their hands, their feet. Means all five senses have to be mutaqeen, have to be purified. And as a result they reach sincerity in each sense. So it's a continuous path. If Allah addresses the servant to be sincere in their hearing means then they're always trying to hear that which is good and righteous and they cleanse their hearing from bad sounds and as a result they can begin to hear their inner reality speaking to them and guiding them. Not guiding them through their nafs and bad desires but guiding them through ibadah and worshipness. That I think you should be fasting. When you do something sinful then you say, okay I should fast, I should be giving my sadaqah, my zakat, I should be praying more, I should be doing service and khidmat and, and giving food. Then Allah is then guiding that servant into the sincerity of hearing until he makes their hearing sincere and they begin to hear what Allah wants them to hear. Then their seeing becomes sincere in which they don't want to see anymore from these eyes of their eyes but the eyes of their heart. And they meditate often to open the eyes of their heart. And then Allah will ask them, then clean the eyes of your physicality and don't look to that but now look inside your heart and look for our Divinely Presence within the heart. And they begin to open up their heart. And with all the senses, we talked about that in all the last two weeks inshaAllah. In tafakkirun and the people of tafakkur, those were the whole subjects of tafakkur. So inshaAllah get the meditation book, two copies, one for yourself, one for a gift. Buy the books from all our people, buy the books and give them as gifts to people that, and, and read them, read them. Take notes in, in the books on the meditation so that we, we get the questions from people whom have read these subjects and now they want to go deeper into that reality. Otherwise uh, yeah and give it as a gift to somebody that get another book and give it as a gift to somebody. Give the book on Hajj to Muslim families and give that as a gift to people. So there's so many ways to participate and, and do da'wah and, and all sorts of khidmat and service inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can through the Sharif lessen the hardships or the mandatory testing on the path of tariqah or the testing comes nevertheless? Please forgive my ignorance. Yeah, Durud the Sharif makes everything to be beatific so that the person on the path in a beatific state doesn't feel the, the difficulty of testing to the extent of someone who doesn't have the Durud the Sharif. You know that the, the, this, this life is like a sting. And everybody going to feel its, its sting but those whom they do their durud the sharif then it become more beatific for them that they feel Allah is guiding them. So they understood their tests come and difficulties come and that Allah for every test He wants to give a reward. When they understood the hikmah and the wisdom of these testings in life and they don't ask for it but they patiently persevere through any type of difficulty. Then they understood Allah raising them, dressing them, they meditate, contemplate. So then Allah put them in the schools for all of these tools. So that's what makes the, the whole path so beatific. If you don't use the tools then life is just difficult. But if they use the tools then everything becomes very beatific because they draw near to Allah every time they're sad. So every time they enter into a sadness then Allah draws near to them and that becomes a very beatific love that they have for the Divinely Presence. But if we don't train ourselves it just become, oh what's this now then this hardship then this hardship then this, it doesn't stop by leaving. It just means then you'll have the hardship in shaitan's presence. And that's bad because you lost here and there. So inshaAllah Allah give us uh, patience inshaAllah. Sayyidi, someone from TikTok is saying, JazakAllah, thank you Sayyidi for uploading all the sohbahs and Q&A on Spotify. I listen to it regularly. Oh mashaAllah, yeah, good platform. It's like audio books, you just listen to the talks and drive and, uh, and listen. Anytime anybody has a long drive, 
podcasts, Spotify, we have all the platforms, we have the nasheeds, we have the talks, we have uh, the life, we have an audio book on the, the classical Islam, the, the lives of the 40 grand shaykhs of the Naqshbandi order. You drive two hours, listen to two or three of the shaykhs and, and, and illuminate yourself while you're driving. So alhamdulillah, your, your car becomes like a maqam. If you listen to holy things while you drive, you have this sort of time where you're alone with your Lord and then taking knowledges and salawats inshaAllah. Uh, thank you shaykh for all your teachings, you really brought the light to my dark heart. Uh, shaykh Thanks forgive me if this question is inappropriate. But I'm confused on the reality of Haq as Hay and Qayyum, and also Haq being one of the names of Allah since it describes the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad You're confused about what? Haq? The, these are very high level, so you have to go back to, you know, from the origins of the talks that as soon as we go into a reality means it's a very deep reality. It's not somebody you go into the masjid and say, oh did you know haqq is like this? They probably will attack you and that's probably not going to be sort of beneficial. These are the knowledge of arafin and Gnosticism in which Allah gave them a great a deeper understanding of these immense realities. So we come to the path to understand the truth and the haqq and the light and these realities. Awliyaullah first come and teach us that this path is not based on you knowing anything about Allah. You don't be arrogant, you're, you're not here to know Allah's reality, you don't even know your reality. So you first look inside not to look to Allah The one whom is coming and contemplating, contemplates about his own existence and the existence of creation, not the Creator. Because then you take yourself out of belief according to Ahlul Sunnah, don't contemplate the Creator. So the haqq of our creation, the truth of our creation and the light of our creation, Allah has no shariq and no partner. So means then the truth of this creation and the best of this creation is called Muhammadun Rasulullah Through the physicality, the best of forms is Sayyidina Muhammad and the best of light. The be best of the arwa and the souls is Muhammadun Rasulullah So the best of light is going to be the haqq and the haqq of Allah's light is Sayyidina Muhammad And the Hayyu al Qayyum is then in the understanding of huruf. So when Allah wants some want to be a wali, he gives him knowledges. When he wants him to be a knowledge of a wali, he gives him the reality of the huruf. Because these are the building blocks in which Allah made that word. When Allah made the word haqq, one of its understandings is He put a ha and qaf in it because these are like ingredients, salt and pepper. So this ha and qaf is that this is the hav hayat, that one of the ingredients of this haqq is the oceans of al-hayat. And the qaf al-qayyum means eternal. So from the ocean of eternity Allah put some ingredients. And then from the ocean of al-hayat, the eternal oceans of hayat, then this eternal light is being made, that eternal and self-sustaining is ancient. Its beginning and its end is not something that we can even understand. Its sustainer is Allah because it's high. It's qayyum and it's eternal. 
So then the reality and the breaking down of the reality of Hayyul Qayyum is the reality of Haqq. So then Hay and the ocean of Hayat and eternity is not Allah because Allah is not the living and dead. Allah is outside of this ocean of creation. Allah has neither life nor death, He's beyond our understanding of, of this. Those are attributes related to creation. So the eternal power of this reality then is this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah that Allah gave that hayat to. So that ocean of eternity is inside Muhammadun Rasulullah in the light, in the world of light. And Allah gave that light to be Qayyum, that it's self-sustained from Divinely Presence. Nobody feeds it and nobody can starve it. So these are the sort of breakdown that awliyaullah were inspired to bring of the realities of haqq. So when people want to understand, oh this haqq, that's haqq, this haqq, that's, that's okay. But this then goes deep into the reality of the truth and the truth is within the oceans of creation and the best of creation is Sayyidina Muhammad and from that very soul is emanating the Holy Qur'an. From the heart of that soul is the location in which Holy Qur'an, Allah's Divinely speech that's not created is emanating from that location. So that's immensity of, of realities that can't be understood. InshaAllah Allah give us understanding of it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how do we warn our family and close ones about these crazy times that are coming without thinking that we are crazy? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Depending upon, you know, there's no blanket answer because every family is, is, is slightly more crazier than the other one. So depending upon what, what people and their conditions are in. Some people are in complete denial of everything. So, you know, it's difficult to talk to them about anything. Others, alhamdulillah everyone now has access to social media so they see the posts and they, they see uh, what's happening in the news and they see all these different things. So everyone to their, to their own level, Prophet described, talk to people according to their level. So depending upon the level of each family member then trying to introduce, oh have you heard about this or have you seen this in the news and have you seen that in the news, oh it looks like there's a lot of panic, a lot of difficulties, you know these are just very difficult times, strange times. And that may be enough to get somebody to look and to think and say, yeah why is it like this, why is it like that and then it's good to be a, in a live a life of preparedness and and to prepare ourselves from days of difficulty. And, but the main thing again is that to focus on oneself. You know I have to build myself before I can worry about other people. If I fully built myself, fully made my connection, fully prepared myself for difficulties then you basically lead by example. The people look to you and a light comes from you and it's more important that that light enter to the people versus from the tongue of somebody which will be the energy from their mind to the mind of somebody else. So again there's so many relatives and trying to deal with everybody to, to guide people, it's better to guide oneself before you get distracted. And then lose your own path because of entering into arguments with outside people and that's what shaitan wants. Is everywhere you go you start to argue with all your relatives until you decide it's too difficult I'm not going to even do it myself. So then that person lost everything. Not only they didn't help anyone but they lost their own path. Somebody emailed and said they want to get taweezes for all their relatives. And is it okay if the relatives don't believe? He said, absolutely you shouldn't do that. Because that will cause problems, you give to people whom didn't ask for that and they start to say, what is this and argue about this and argue about that until you decide that you'll take your taweez off too. So then who won? Shaitan won. So build yourself, that's why when they tell you you get in a plane, 
The first thing before the plane gets off and says that if something happens on this plane, uh, put the mask on yourself first. If you have a, a little child, they said, put the mask first on yourself. He said, no, no, I want to put it on my child. He said, no, because if this plane starts to go down and you're playing around with the mask on your child, you're the one who's going to pass out and then the child is completely alone. And that mask may come off and difficulty for the child, so it means that don't play with other people. First get yourself to be straight, strong, you're firm, you know like a mountain. When you're all straight nobody's taking anything off of your neck and your belief, then you're good to go. Then you're like awtad, you're like a mountain firm on this earth. You know the awtad and this category of awliya they're like mountains. Nothing shakes them. You know Allah shake them but other than Allah means whatever this dunya has it tries to shake and their inheritance is to teach that be firm and when you're firm then people can benefit from your firmness. But in a, in a subtle and gentle and early state that can be very bad because they start going around and, and debating and arguing with everyone and before they, they lose everything and drop everything themselves. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Are there specific practices for benefiting an unborn child during pregnancy? Yeah, the salawats, all the du'as on the app that are asking from the du'as, uh, du'a manzoor, du'a uh, umm du'a, all, all of the du'as on the app are from Sultanul Awliya, all the, the etiquettes for the prayers, means what to recite during the whole prayers. All of these have a tremendous amount of uh, blessings. There are the du'as that take away the, the fire and uh, the anger of the ifrit that would try to come against the child. So the more that they can recite du'a, Qur'an, salawat, durood sharif and salawats, the more that beatific energy and the protection and the pr protective energy is dressing the, the womb, the mother and the, inshaAllah the child. So the, the more ibadah, the more worshipness that the person is doing is the immense source of uh, blessings inshaAllah. And the, tri the child, the soul of that child is, is in that worshipness being dressed by those realities and those Muhammadan lights and the Muhammadan salawats inshaAllah. Playing the salawats within the house and dalal al khirat and durood al sharif within the house so that the external energies are also powerful inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah a really close friend is worried their cancer has returned. Is there any recommendation of what we can send to them to listen to for shifa or from the website? Yeah again same all the du'as inshaAllah and uh, make the muraqabah and make the connection. <clears throat> inshaAllah the connection with the shaykhs then take away any type of negative energy and uh, for every sickness Allah has a, has a remedy and most important is to fix oneself, connect oneself means whatever test Allah is sending us in life is to make sure that we have a strong connection. So the, the ultimate healing is the connection and the closeness to Sayyidina Muhammad so nothing like a little bit of uh, sicknesses and difficulties that motivate the servant to really want to connect and really want to make their connection with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And so that even the abode in the hereafter is at a very close proximity to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can you please explain how to perform Umrah in a tariqah way or if there's anywhere on the website where we can read about it to make our Umrah more spiritual? By the Hajj book. 
Yeah, I'm going to get the Hajj book. Yeah, the moderators, uh, Misbah didn't send the link for the Hajj book? Yeah, definitely is the, the secrets of the Hajj. So once you have that book then you understand actually what is Mecca represent, what is Medina represent, what is the tawaf represent, what are all of these representations, all of these, these acts that we do are symbolic for the oceans of faith but far more deeper for the reality of awliyaullah because of the presence and who are the souls at the Kaaba, why Allah have, has us making tawaf around the Kaaba. It's not for the stones but it's because the soul of Prophet is inside that Kaaba and 124,000 sahabi, 124,000 awliyaullah, the arwa and their lights are inside the holy Kaaba. So it has an immense reality, as soon as we're making tawaf they're already making tawaf around the presence of Divinely Presence of Allah within their heart. When we enter into the tawaf then we're being dressed by those tajallis and the seven tawaf is for the seven realities and seven paradises that insan has. One circumvallation for each of those realities to be dressed by those realities and to, to dress our reality upon ourself in this physical world. But that requires the knowledges of these awliya so we get the book on the realities of hajj, you read it and it uh, gives you the understanding for hajj even from a distance because we're all making hajj. You know you have to buy a ticket, every salah is hajj. So as soon as we make our salah we see ourselves at the holy Kaaba we're praying, you've made your hijrah, your movement and that's your hajj. So everything is at a constant state of hajj for the believer. Then they have to know that reality by reading from that book. When they read from the book and read those knowledges then they understand the realities that their soul should understand. So that when they pray for and stand for salah they should understand the different qiblas. There's a qibla for the body, there's a qibla for their heart and there's a qibla for their soul. So there's all these different realities and those are all within the same curriculum. So the meditation, the hajj, the lataif of the heart, the surah yaseen, the angelic power is all of our curriculum. So anyone sort of a student of this school of the SMC school in the meditation, Sufi meditation society is a part of that school. So the books that came out for that teacher is based on his curriculum and that's why you'll see it repeat throughout all. So anyone who reads these books they're familiar with all these talks through the 12 months because it's all a part of that curriculum. So not, there's not a book on a different reality, it's all based on the same curriculum that to know what the Mecca Medina is, to know what then what is Mecca and what is the symbol of the Kaaba is the lataif of the qalb. What is Medina is the Surat al Yaseen tafsir. So what is all of this? The angelic energy. How to achieve it you have to do meditation. So it's all the same reality and all a part of the same curriculum, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Mawlana Walaykum as salaam uh, Mawlana, because people are stressed and isolated, should we make efforts to check in with our community? Or better to use the opportunity to seclude ourselves and practice more. Unsure how to preserve the integrity of the community. What what community? Yeah, I mean, if you have a community and people are are, are isolated, the, that's a khidmat is to go to the elderly, make sure people have food, make sure they they have supplies. If, if, if you live in a, a place where the people are elderly and they need access to food then that's a khidmat, a great service. So depending upon what, what people are doing, so but uh, if people are too busy around too many people they also lose themselves. They get into gossiping and talking and, and coming back with all sorts of uh, gossips and, and cross-contaminations. 
So then there's everything has to be a balance in which you, you're able to be around people and you're able to isolate and to build oneself. And if you know a, a group of people that are in need then to, to be of service to them is then uh, immense blessings inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.